the Bible is an idol. Now today we're going to talk about the Word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12, for the Word of God is quick. You know what that means? It means it's alive. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now many people all right, say this, this book right here, that's the Word of God. Just because somebody writes a word down says the word of God is quick. You see, the word of God, is, it don't mean the words they write down is quick. It means the word of God is quick. See, if I write a book about a horse, the book is not a horse. If, I, if this was a book about birds, this is not a bird. It's a book about birds. This is a book about the word of God. It's not the word of God. Now get this. The word of God is alive. Is that a lie? No, it don't have no life in it. It's not the Word of God. The Word of God is a lie. Back in the mountains, if you stuck a bra in you or something, they said, oh, it went down to the quick. It went down to where you could really feel it. It was, it's, it, it touched life. So the Word of God is quick. It means it's alive and it's powerful. Now, let me ask you something. When you read this, Bible people read that and they think this is the Word of God. It says, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can this discern the thoughts of your heart? No. See, God's a spirit. The words you speak is spirit. Now, I want to teach you the real word of God. And I know it's not taught today. They, they say the Bible's the word of God. That is one of the biggest lies ever told in history. It really is. It's told, it's a, it's a blatant lie. Now, I know in the past, under the old covenant, God wrote his laws down on tablets of stone. Thou shalt not. And all that. Well, that was uh, what God had wrote down. That wasn't what killed everybody that didn't obey it. God's one done that. God is a spirit, just like in me is a spirit. Jesus would say, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So pay attention to this and learn what the word of God is, you see. Now, what this originally said, they didn't say word. You see, the word never did come into existence until a hundred years after the last letter that Paul wrote, or Hebrew, I mean, not Hebrews, but Revelations. It didn't come into being. The word, word, comes from a German, the Germanic language. The German people got that after, after, see, words developed like, they never had books in the Bible, they had scroll. So as things developed through the years, they, they, they interpolated the Bible. This is supposed to say, for the Spirit of God is quick. That's what it's supposed to say. But they put the word because King James and them wanted you to believe this was the word. But it's not the word. See, the word of God is spirit. For the word of God is spirit and is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what it's supposed to say. Now, when it says, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, that's not true. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Spirit of God. See, in the beginning wasn't the word. There was no word for word in the Aramaic language and even in the Greek language. See, in the beginning was the spirit. The spirit was with God and the spirit was God. And the spirit was made flesh. The Holy Ghost came in Jesus and dwelt among them. That's the real living word of God. It's the spirit. So don't get mixed up in this and have the devil lie to you. Now, let me tell you a truth. I want you to know this truth. I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm a hillbilly and I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But I know there's not going to be many people believe this. And you know it. Jesus knows it. The Holy Ghost in me knows it. We're just going to get a few people. But they're going to continue to believe that this is the Word of God. Jesus had it in his hand in the 10th chapter of the book of Revelations. And he swore to God that time would be no more. Because this stopped the Word of God. This stopped the Spirit of God. Everybody looks in this or... Uh, they depend on this. They look in the, this instead of looking to the Spirit. Now, for the Spirit of God is quick and powerful and sharper than into it. And the Spirit can discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. A book can't discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Only the Spirit can do that. The Spirit of God, the Apostle would say, the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times, uh, latter days, perilous times would come. We see the Spirit speaks to me. And he said, I want you to do this, Hillbilly. I want you to tell them so they'll know. This is the dumbest thing it ever, ever was. For somebody to believe that a book is the Word of God. 
It's got no spirit in it. You see, them tablets of stone in the ark didn't have no spirit in them. God guarded them and protected them because that was their covenant in those days. The covenant with us today is the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit. For the Spirit of God is quick. Now, I want to tell you a secret how you can really, really, really know the Word of God. See, when uh, Stevens was telling them about God, it cut them to their heart. See, words will cut you to your heart. Something you read don't cut you to your heart. And and Peter and them, when they, they told them Pharisees about Jesus and the resurrected Jesus, it cut them to the heart. See, because they had killed Jesus. And they said Jesus was the king. And when they would tell those truths in those days about the resurrection, it would cut them to the heart. It don't do it today because it's been told over and over and over again. All right? Now, let me tell you something that's true. The Word of God today for us, and I want you to experience this. The Word of God today for us is the Bible is an idol. The Bible is the mark of the beast. All right? Now, what, what I want you to do is experience the Word of God. Are you ready to do this? Take this book to a big church, a Pentecostal, Catholic, Baptist, a Mormon, it don't make any difference. And stand up in front of the audience there, if it's four or five hundred people or four or five thousand. Take it to Joel Osteen's church and say, this Bible is an idol. This is the mark of the beast. And if you want to, tear the thing up. You know? And you know what you'll experience? You'll experience the true and living Word of God. That's some of them uh, that goes out and, and does that. They don't do it no more because you're going to get killed. Because this is their God. This book is their God. See, the Spirit's not their God. They don't have the Spirit. I've watched them die. They don't even have the Spirit of God. Now, I'm telling you the true Word of God for today. And he told me, said, they won't be able to receive this Word. There's a few out there that we're after. Jesus is after you few that can hear the Word of God, that worships Him in the Spirit. The Bible is not the Word of God. See, for the Word, the, for the Spirit of God is quick. You see, the Spirit of God is alive. The Bible's not alive. It was was not in the beginning. The Bible was not in the beginning. The Spirit was in the beginning. So learn this simple truth. It's so simple. I don't see how the world got this. They're going to be so surprised when they go out in the spirit world. And God is in me, and I'm telling you the Word of God. The Word of God for you today, like it was in Peter and Nim's day, was that Jesus was raised from the dead. He was the king. He'd sent back the Holy Ghost. Now that's the new covenant. All right, this is the new covenant, and this is the word for the world today. And whether you can sing it or not, it's a word, of, word from God to you. The Bible is an idol. That's five words. Now, the Bible is the mark of the beast. And so that is your word of God. Go to any church, speak it. Go to a bar room, speak it. Go anywhere and speak it. Tell them the Bible's an idol, the Bible's the mark of the beast. And then you'll see that the word of God is quick. It will cut them to their heart. I have been in churches. And I stand up and tell them that. Do you know people would scream, jump up and scream and run out of the church and run back in the church. They'd start cutting fits, run to the altar and all of them would start praying and cut a fit. It cuts them to their heart. Now I'm telling you from experience. I've preached this from Canada to Brazil and all the way from South Carolina to South Los Angeles. Yeah, I've preached this all over. And you preach this word. The Bible's an idol, it's the mark of the beast. They'll jump and scream. They'll try to kill you. They'll put you in jail. They put me in jail, run me out of town so many times. Now that's the real word of God for today. So if you want to see a real word of God that's uh, uh, as quick, as powerful, and sharper and two-edged sword, go say that to them. Go say, the Bible's an idol. The Bible's the mark of the beast. Not many is going to receive this, but there's going to be a few of us. There's going to be a few come out of here, but God's going to pour out the vials and destroy the world. We know that's what's coming. Jesus knows everything. He knew that this wouldn't get many, but it's going to get a few. And we're going to take them to heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost and the real word of God. And the Bible's an idol. The Bible's the mark of the beast. It's quick and alive in this world today. Day, we're gonna see them all again. When the 
the sons of God.